Welcome to the Comparator Series. On the last video, we looked at an A-stable multivibrator circuit using a comparator. It was a very simple circuit, which lends itself to a natural duty factor of 50%. This video covers an alternate circuit that allows for any duty factor. The first time I saw this circuit was in the 1973 National Linear Applications Manual in AppDote 74. The LM139 is a quad of independently functioning comparators. The app note included many ways to use a voltage comparator, but the end equations for the pulse generator uh, for variable duty cycle were clearly wrong. It talks about taking into account the diode drops, but then the equations have VBE, like they might be using a emitter base junction of a transistor instead of a diode. The only difference between the previous A stable and this example is the addition of diodes in series with the resistors that are charging and discharging the capacitor. In this case, let's say the threshold voltage is two-thirds VCC, because V out equals VCC. C1 charges through R1 and D1. The time constant of R1 and C1 determines the amount of time the output is high. Once the voltage on the comparator reaches two-thirds VCC, the output goes to zero volts and sets the threshold voltage to one-third VCC. Then C1 discharges through R2 and D2. The time constant of R2 and C1 determines the amount of time the output is low. As you may know from watching my other videos, I made a pledge. No math steps left behind. Recall in a previous video, we derived the equation for the charging of a capacitor, where tau is RC. In the previous A stable video, we rearranged it to solve for time. In the case of the A stable, with 50% duty, the charging voltage supply was VCC, and the lower threshold voltage was one third VCC. In this case, the threshold voltage is still one third VCC but the capacitor is charged and discharged through a diode, so the voltage source is now VCC minus VF, the forward voltage drop of the diode. In the case of the A stable with 50% duty, the charging voltage supply was VCC, and the upper threshold voltage was two-thirds VCC. In this case, the threshold voltage is still two-thirds VCC, but the capacitor is charged and discharged through a diode, so the voltage source is now also VCC minus VF. Let's get rid of the fraction in the numerator and subtract the lower trigger point time from the upper trigger point time, then factor out tau. We can use the logarithm quotient rule that says the log of M minus the log of N is the log of M over N, provided the logs have the same base and we get this. Let's work on the numerator first. We can join the one using a, a common denominator of three times VCC minus VF, then collecting like terms of VCC. Moving on to the denominator, we can do the same thing and collecting like terms of VCC. I'll put the numerator and denominator back together then simplify by cross multiplication. These terms cancel and leaves us with this. We can get rid of that pesky negative sign in front of the natural log using the logarithm reciprocal rule, where the log of 1 over x equals the negative log of x. We can simplify this even further, splitting the fraction, then splitting the fraction again where two VCC breaks up into individual VCCs. Then we can combine these terms. That lets us cancel these terms and we get this. Replacing tau with RC gives us this equation, the time for the capacitor to charge or discharge between one-third VCC and two-thirds VCC with the voltage drop of the diode included. But that diode causes us a problem. Recall from the previous A stable multivibrator video, this chart shows the capacitor charging between one-third VCC and two-thirds VCC, which is between the natural log of three halves and the natural log of three. 
The current in the resistor is highest when the capacitor first starts to charge and decreases once charged. Now with the diode in series with the resistor, the varying current through the diode will cause the diode to have a different voltage drop across it. We need to determine the average voltage across the resistor and use that current to determine the diode drop. Let's have some fun with calculus to derive an equation for the average voltage between the natural log of 3 halves and the natural log of 3 of e to the minus x. We will integrate between these two bounds. Then to get the average, we can divide the amount of x that is integrated with, which is the natural log of 2. Using the simplest common integral, e to the u du is e to the u. Since our x is minus 1, we must do a u substitution, where u is minus x, and therefore du is minus 1 dx. Applying that to the integral, now we have these pesky negative signs on the boundaries. Using the logarithm reciprocal rule once again fixes that, but we have another problem. The upper bound is less than our lower bound. We can use the rule for switching bounds of a definite integral, which simply puts a minus sign in front of the integral. That's cool because the minus signs within and in front of the integral can cancel. e to the x and natural log cancel, so we get 1 over 3 times the natural log of 2, which is 0 0.4809. We need to center that between VL and VH, so it's multiplied by the difference between VH and VL and offset by VL. That can be simplified by using VCC over 3. That gives us an average voltage during the charge of 2.468 volts. And here's the average voltage shown on the chart. When V out goes to zero, the capacitor discharges through R2. Since we know the average voltage of the capacitor is 2.468 volts, we can write the equation for V average is the current I through the diode and resistor times R2 plus the forward drop of the diode. Diode drops are usually estimated at around 0 0.65 volts. Now that's not going to be accurate because that amount of drop is for a fairly high forward current. These charging and discharging currents are low on the order of tens or hundreds of microamps. Let's look at the data sheet for the 1N4148 diode. The 0.65 number I mentioned is for a forward current of 5 milliamps. With the currents we are dealing with, the voltage drop is going to be down in this region. I digitized the forward voltage versus forward current plot of the 1N4148 and fit it to a power trend line, which yielded a very good R squared value of 0.9985. I did a video on digitizing spec plots. You should watch it if you haven't seen it before. We can replace the VF term in the equation with the equation for the diode, but now we have a conundrum. We need to know the current through the resistor and diode, but we can't calculate the current until we have the voltage drop across the diode, which also depends on current. We can make use of the solver in Excel to accomplish this for us. Excel has a goal seek tool, but it's limited to changing only one variable. The solver tool can change multiple cells. In our example, we will design an ACE table with a frequency of 1 kHz and a duty factor of 20%. The set objective will be the time the voltage is high or low. In this case, the high time of 20% duty is 0.2 milliseconds or 0 0.002 seconds. We will arrive at that answer by varying the cells for R1 and IR1, the current through R1. To get the correct current, we will constrain the formula for V average in the high or low state to be equal to the 2.468 volts we came up with for the average. This will set the cell for current I to be whatever it takes to satisfy that equation. The current is of course dependent on the resistor value, but the resistor value will get adjusted simultaneously. The GRG nonlinear method needs to be selected for this since it's nonlinear. That's the default method. Here's an introduction to the spreadsheet. The inputs are here at the top. The supply voltage I entered was 5 volts. 
I'm using a 10 nanofarad capacitor and the frequency of 1000 hertz and a duty factor of 0.2. Here's the calculation of the average charge voltage. This will be used to set the constraint in the solver. The time high and time low are calculated based on the frequency. I created a new cell style called unprotected outputs. Although these are uh, calculated outputs, the solver will need to adjust these cells so they must not be protected. I put in approximate values for the resistors and their currents. Consider them to be the seeds for the solver. The forward diode voltage is calculated with the diode equation and the average capacitor voltage is calculated with this formula. Standard component values are calculated here and used in the schematic. The solver is an add-in for XL, which is not included by default. From the file menu, select Options, then Add-ins, then Manage Excel Add-ins, and Go. Check the box next to the Solver Add-in and click OK. Now, from the Data tab, the Solver tool appears. Now let's run the solver. Select the cell that's the object, which is the time high calc. Click the solver and you see that it already has the set objective as the TH calc cell. We want the solver to give us a high time of 0 0.0002 seconds. We must manually type that in. We can't refer to a cell. Then we need to select the cells to change to get our desired result. In this case, we want the solver to adjust the cells for R1 and IR1. Now we need to run the constraint. Select Add and make the cell reference for the V average for high time and set it equal to the constraint of the target V average cell here. The method by default is the GRG nonlinear method. Then select Solve. A dialog box will pop up that says the solver has found a solution, and select that option to keep the solver solution. Notice the time high calculation is very close to the target. Now let's run the solver for the time low. Select the cell that's the object, which is the time low calc. Click the solver and you'll see that it already has the set objective as the TL calc cell. We want the solver to give us a high time a point triple oh eight seconds. Then we need to select the cells to change to get the desired result. In this case, the cells for R2 and IR2. Now we need to modify the constraint. Make the cell reference the V average for the low time and set it equal to the constraint of the target V average cell already there. Notice the time high calculation is very close to the target. Here's the simulation schematic with the calculated component values. The time high is 200 microseconds. The low time is around 801 microseconds. And the period is 1.01 milliseconds. We nailed it. Now, do you really think you will ever have the need to use a comparator ace table with so much design precision, even better than the tolerance of the components around it? Probably not, but the point is, you can. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.